Hello and welcome to my introduction series of scripting for artists. My name is Alexander Richter and today we want to have a look of how to create custom startups for your software. So what I mean with that? So mainly I mean to start your software in a specific version, um, set up scripts and plugins and additional paths changing some configuration file like resolution in especially in initialization and menu and some additions like setting up your licenses so let's dive right in so we are currently in maya so we will use the batch files and batch commands so for example i have here uh, three examples for starting houdini starting maya and starting nuke bat so let's open up what i did there so the first and the last line are mostly important for the console. So every time you would execute a batch file, it will open up a console and um, like executing all the code. So what you don't want to have is you don't want to have any text and like all this all the stuff you do. And you also don't want after Maya will start in this case, you don't want to have the console on. So the first line allows you to do no prints. So it's an empty console. And the last line, the exit, is about if everything's set up and Maya's already started, it will close the console. So it's uh, like all the surroundings here. So in line two, we have a comment. So to call our comment, so you know what's happening here. So you know it's, it's about Maya here and later you know what parts of the code is what. And in line four to 13, we just set up some um, variables so we can reuse them and again and again. For example, in line four, we set up the Maya version. And as you can already see, we use it multiple times on multiple occasions during this code. And instead of always like write 2015 in this case, you just set up this environment, this variable here, Maya version, and reuse it. And if you want to change, for example, to 2017 Maya, you just change it here and everything else will adapt to that. So how to set up any variable in batch commands? So what you do is you, you write down set, then uh, space. And then in quotes, you write down at first your variable equals your information. In this case, it's a number, 2015, or it could be, in the next case, a path. And here you can also see how you use um, already set up variables. So um, here you, you write down, for example, we use Maya version here again, because the path uh, needs Maya 2015 to execute it. And it is this way how you use any variable in uh, batch commands. And you can already see the practical way of um, setting up some variables in front so you don't have to change them again and again during the code if um, your version changed, if your path changes, and so on and so forth. So um, starting with line seven, we set up some basic uh, paths, like uh, where's the project route, where's the pipeline path, plugin path, image path, software path. So we have them there and use them to customize our Maya in this case. So starting with uh, line 16, we uh, start to manipulate Maya before it starts. So in this case, uh, one environment variable um, used by Maya is Python path. Um, it allows you everything is which is part of the Python path can be used um, in Python. So you can use from and import. So for example, again, we do a set Python path, and then we already set, set the pipeline path, the software path, and, um, and so we can just write down a variable pipeline path and say, okay, a Python path equals pipeline path. Be aware because um, if you just write down Python path equals pipeline path, it will always overwrite. So if you do it three times, there just the last time will count. So what you need to do is use, uh, afterwards you need to use a semicolon and then again use the Python path variable. So you, you, um, what you do is you say pipeline path and then semicolon and then you add all the paths which are already part of Python uh, path in this case. So you will just add to that instead just override. Be aware of that because else you can destroy your structure in a way that Maya will not recognize some paths you maybe set up or it's standard um, to know it. 
So next one is uh, Maya plugin path, which is a custom Maya um, environment variable where it searches for plugins um, the same way as your plugin manager does. So if you would add uh, something to that, you will have it in your plugin manager, which you can check in or check out. Quite important is the Maya shelf path where you can set up in your network, for example, or in your project, project a shelf. Um, which will be shared with everyone using this batch file. And so everyone has the same shelf um, inside their Maya. The next one are some custom informations like um, Maya disable CIP or Maya disable CIR, which just disables um, the Maya report, which makes um, closing or um, crashing uh, a little bit faster. So it's not like you don't have to wait as long um, so, it's, so there are some custom um, variables you can manipulate, you can Google them and then change them before you start Maya even. And in 40, uh, 34, we set up the image path, for example, in this case, mainly for the splash screen at the beginning. Um, here are some customizations for plugins. So in this case, we want to set up some renderers like Arnold or RenderMan, especially before Arnold was part of Maya, you need to set it up before. So we needed to set up like some Maya module path, Arnold plugin path, and especially important, the Arnold license host, which is a server called Blue here in this case. Um, it's very really quite important, especially if you don't want to install the license every time or copy it every time on every computer and just want to distribute it through the network in your project, in your team. Uh, it is cool to set it up as an environment variable. Um, you can look it up or in this case in Arnold, it said like Arnold license host, it's called the environment variable and you can set it up and use it, distribute it through the network. And the same thing applies for RenderMan. We set up some random information here. And last but not least, we call Maya and start it. So we set up some path and then um, we just say start Maya exa. Um, the only thing I do here is it makes a difference between starting Maya purely or starting Maya opening a file. So that's what, what this um, thing is about here. So, and the same thing applies, of course, for Nuke and Houdini. So, as you can see, mostly it's the same code. Of course, it's less. Nuke uh, can be uh, guided like with less environment variables. In this case, we just do the echo and the exit, of course, again. And for example, these lines again are more for um, our setting up some some paths we, we want to reuse. So, and starting from here, these are the interesting parts which changes Nuke. Um, we add some Nuke path like pipeline path, software path, plugin path, and quite important, the nuke init and the nuke menu path, which allows you to manipulate, um, to put it in init pi and menu pi in this path. And for example, change um, your starting resolution, change your toolbar menus and so on, and change the behavior um, of how nuke should behave in this case. And last but not least, we open up nuke. So these are the basic um, setup for you. So now you can start your Maya, start your Nuke, start your Houdini, whatever you want in uh, Windows. You can, of course, do that the same thing in Linux and Mac. It's just a little bit different language. It will be not like batch commands. Um, in the next video, I will talk about how to set up the user setup in Maya, the init and menus in uh, Nuke, and how to really manipulate this. And I have a quick example here. Um, I uh, created the open source pipeline Plex and it also uses the batch files. And if you see, if I execute it, it will open a customized version. And um, if in the beginning, you already see that will uh, open up a customized splash screen. So it's not about just being aesthetic. It's also to know, oh, I open up a custom version of uh, Maya in this case. And what I also do is I print up some information. So in this case, for example, you use Plex, it welcomes you, it tells you which paths it added, which scripts uh, are here and what it changed. For example, added a menu and a shelf. And if you will open up uh, my, you will see here at the menu, it has a Plex menu item with some custom scripts. And of course, I also changed um, some settings like um, in this case, time or linear or resolution and created a customized version for my project, for my team. 
and uh, everyone is working on the same line with the same plugins, uh, with the same versions of, of everything, uh, which is really cool and quite important uh, on the long run, especially. So this was the, the introduction to that. The next one, as I said, will be into how to change this kind of things like settings and resolutions and the, the stuff. And um, I hope you like this video and share it with people who are interested in that. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.